We're here to answer your game, gaming, or game night questions. Tonight's question comes from tabletop bellhop patron Kevin Renault, who asks, My daughter is looking to get into Dungeons & Dragons, and she is looking at the starter set that everyone seems to sell for around 20 bucks. I don't know if this would be a wise investment or not. Where would you suggest she start? Well, thanks for the great question, Kevin, and for supporting us through our Patreon. Now, I have to start by saying I really wish Kevin didn't have to ask this question. Like, to me, in an ideal world, if you wanted to get into Dungeons & Dragons, there'd be one place to go. There'd be one core product out there that's meant to be the gateway for all gamers looking to get into the fifth edition of this rather classic but very well-loved game. But that's not the case, unfortunately. And even if you Google the words, how do I get into Dungeons & Dragons? How, what should I start with in Dungeons & Dragons? You're going to get different answers from Wizards of the Coast. So instead of having one clear answer, as of right now, there are four different Dungeons & Dragons starter sets on the market right now available. Four totally different entry points and a new one coming next month. Now, having delved through certain portions of the website, I would say that Wizards at least thinks it does have a solid and understandable plan for what they think all these products are for. Unfortunately, the lines of communication are solidly out of whack and certain naming conventions could probably be revisited. Yeah, I would say at this point, they think they have one gateway point. And I've got to admit, the one they think is right is probably the one you would guess just looking by names, but still... It is a mess because working on this, both Sean and I found two completely different pages that were called Getting Started with Dungeons and Dragons. These are both on Wizards main website for D&D, and they both suggested two totally different places to start reading. Yeah, the fact that both Google and their own different and their own drop down menus seem to offer differing advice mm -hmm. was a truly bizarre experience that Mo and I had to try and yes. we, we realized we were both talking about the same page, except it wasn't the same page. It was mm -hmm. called the same thing, but it was actually in different subdirectories. Yes. Basically, I, I worked on the article and I put it down and Sean's like, what are you talking about? They have a very clear direction that tells you to go here. And I'm like, well, here's a page that tells you to go here or here and maybe here, which started looking the same like 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 ah. yeah now what baffles me even more with all these products and that would clear things up though might be a little frustrating is that they're all still in print and readily available like you can find these online and in local game stores on shelves bookstores toys r us here in canada you can still buy these products and they're available i would think that if you had and wanted a flagship onboarding product there would be one. And if you ever decide that flagship onboarding product is no longer the perfect starting point, you would discontinue that and release a new one. But I'm not Hasbro, so what do I know? So what seems to be the root of the problem is actually the design and indexing of Wizards' own dnd.wizards.com. Uh, what they want you to see and what Google offers to some people searching are different. Yeah. And if I were a betting man, I would put my money on Google over Wizards for <laughs> who's going to choose who sees what. Yeah. Like, I, I, the first thing I did when starting research on this project, even though I know what options are out there, I am aware of the different starter sets and kind of who they're aimed at. I Googled where to start with D&D because I wanted to know who, what someone else would see. And I was even smart enough to do this in incognito mode because me searching that is going to be very different from someone just off the street searching that. But the top hit was a blog article, and the blog article was very clear, but it wasn't from Wizards of the Coast, right? So I didn't want to just take this blog article. The second was a page on Wizards of the Coast that told me exactly where to start. But it's an old page, and it doesn't match where they want you to start now. Well, thanks to the personalized results one gets from Google, I got a different result and ended up on what I believe to be the page Wizards expects complete noobs to start on. So we could be completely wrong here, and maybe there's a third page out there that they really do think we should be looking at. But anyway, uh, enough trying to figure out what Wizards of the Coast thinks their gateway D&D &D product is and what they're telling the public their D&D &D gateway product is. Let's talk about what we think is the proper entry point to the 5th edition of Dungeons & Dragons. Now, in order to keep 
uh, to help Kevin and his daughter out, what we're going to do is break down exactly what you get in each of the existing starter sets, as well as a little bit of a discussion on each to look at like um, what what you get, the player count, the amount of game, how much gameplay. And we're also going to talk about the new one that has been announced that releases next month, because depending on how long Kevin's daughter is willing to wait, it might be worth waiting for that, though. I don't know. All right. Well, first up, we have the D&D starter set. Now, this was first released in 2014 with an MSRP of 1999 US, which dropped in 2019 to 1799. This is ideal for a group of four to six, and it includes a 64-page adventure book, The Lost Minds of Fandelver, with everything the dungeon master needs to get started. It also has a 32-page rulebook for playing characters levels one to five, with five pre-generated characters and character sheets, and six dice. So this was the gateway. This was the very clear and obvious gateway for five years. This was the only D&D starter set box set out there until 2019. This was the go-to. This is what I own, as you can see behind me here. Um, this is considered by many experienced role-playing game fans and Dungeons & Dragons players to be one of the best starter sets out there on the market from any game. The Adventure, The Lost Minds of Fandelver, is, has a reputation almost at the level of like The Enemy Within or Orient Express for Call of Cthulhu. It is a really popular, well-regarded adventure. It is also very long, which is surprising for a beginner box. Now, I will admit, this is a traditional adventure. It's, it's trying to introduce you to the D&D world, and it's fairly linear, right? It's going to slowly introduce rules. It's going to slowly introduce things. And you're going to learn the game as you play. But it is going to take you multiple sessions to complete. Like maybe if you're doing an Extra Life marathon, you may be able to play all of Fandelver in one setting. Um, I bet you if you Google it, someone's done it. But this is actually a short campaign. And for anyone who knows anything about role playing, you are going to start at level one. And at the end of the adventure, you will reach level five. Yeah, and this campaign is very well laid out in the way that they sort of roll out the the types of challenges players can encounter mm -hmm. along the way uh in your in the chapter it's a four chapter adventure and in chapter one you're going to run into uh some goblins and some traps and then in level three in like chapter two you're going to run into some more complex things and they have really i mean while it is yes a bit of a railroad adventure it's designed to onboard you so it's mm -hmm. very well specifically designed to railroad you through the ups and downs and, and curves of a DD campaign now one thing that's important here for many gamers is it is pre-generated characters there is no character creation available in this starter set if you well until 2019 if you wanted to make a character for DD, you would have to either go get the basic rules or go into like buying the player's handbook now one thing i do like about this adventure that i think is good is it's set in the forgotten realms which nowadays that is the default setting for dungeons and dragons and you're not on some strange world or some place that's out of pulled out of the out of the the, the overall background of dungeons and dragons so it's easy to finish this adventure and continue on. You're just, you're in the realms. Let's keep playing more in the realms. Now, the other nice thing is that they have hooked the pregens into the campaign. So there yes. are NPC hooks and things designed into these characters. So if you, so while you could play this character with other, uh, uh, could play this campaign with other characters, if you had the other books, uh, you'd lose a little bit because yeah. you wouldn't have those built in connections which personally I think is a bit of a drawback because people like to play their own characters. Uh, one thing I did notice is they didn't name the characters, so that was a nice touch. I didn't notice if there were more details. I did look through mine. And as I mentioned already, this is one of the best adventures out there. For I, I'll admit I haven't played it. This is, this is based on a <laughs> surprising amount of time of research into it and looking through my own copy. Um, like People have told me, like, like if you're experienced D&D group, play that adventure. So this is really what wizards want. It's non-RPGers who want to become RPGers to start with. 
this is their ideal first step on the path to becoming a full-time real D&D player. Now, for now, because in 40 days time, that point's about to shift to a new Target exclusive starter set. So right now, this seems to be as far as we can tell where Wizards of the Coast wants you to start. But they're about to put out something new, which we'll get to in a bit. Right. And uh, that's a Target exclusive until October. Yeah. All right. Next up, we've got so the D&D Essentials Kit. This was first released in 2019. It's got an MSRP a little higher of $24.95 US. This box contains the essentials you need to run a D&D game with one Dungeon Master and, impressively, from one to five yes. adventurers. That one's big, right there. This comes with a rule book, a Dragon of Ice Spire Peak Introductory Adventure, six blank character sheets, mm -hmm. 11 dice, a 33 inches by eight and a half inch Dungeon Master screen, 81 cards for magic items, sidekicks, and more, as well as a 21 inch by 15 inch double sided poster map for use with the adventure. And note the poster map is gridded because one of the things you can do in Dungeons Dragons 5th Edition is tactical inch by inch combat. Note can do. So, first off, very obviously, way more stuff, which justifies that price point, I think, pretty well, like, like ridiculously yep. well. Now, interestingly, the day this released is when the other one dropped in price. And I don't know if they felt like it didn't have as much value or if they wanted people to be like, well, obviously, that's the one I start with because it's cheaper. And I get a real D&D, and &D, a D and d vibe out of these two kits at that point. A little bit. Yeah. I I mean, again, the, 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 the difference in character creation. Uh, yeah is is a huge one and then the one-on-one -on -one rules so the mm -hmm. the two biggest sort of differing uh aspects between this and the starter set are those are those two things one you can play one-on-one -on -one, which for some groups or some families may be the choosing sure. you know if it's just you and your brother or you and your sister who want to play D D, you're gonna you have to start with the essentials mm -hmm. kit um but then well, the no, you could play the original and play more than one character. That's always been an option with Dungeons and Dragons. True. It's never been the best option. Yeah, but... I, I, that to me, that I don't consider that an option personally. <laughs> I don't like multi charactering RPGs, and I think as a, as an experience for a new player, that's probably not ideal. Yeah, I um, admit. But so uh, then again, and then character cre creation is the big yes. step up from that. That is a huge game. thing. That that alone could be a deciding point, as far as I'm concerned. There are a lot of people that don't like playing pre-generated characters. So interestingly, there is a brand new rule for Dungeons & Dragons introduced in this set. And it is considered a core rule. So even people who own the PHB Dungeon Master's Guide and Monster Manual may have wanted to pick this up. And that is the rules for sidekicks. That is how the one-on-one -on -one rule variant works is you technically are playing more than one character because you get your character and a number of sidekicks to be able to complete the adventure. I don't own this, so I don't know how those work, and I don't know how, like, to me, it just sounds like we're talking about henchmen, going back to the old D&D days, but from what I understand, it's more like a power you can use, but it represents another character being there. Interesting. Again, just doing some research. So again, I think you're stuck with that, even playing one-on-one. -on -one. There are multiple characters present, but I don't know if it ever calls on you to role play more than one character. Right. Well, that's fair. Uh, I think the fact that you're getting a DM screen and you get additional dice mm -hmm. and a map to give you the tact the ability to start playing tactical uh, are big deals. Yeah, no, they are. Now, as for the adventure, this is a totally different style of adventure. This is a timeline-based sandbox style adventure where you are presented with a map and a world and tell the players to go. Yes, there is an ongoing story. There are going to be story beats, but like you're basically switching from your old school Eye of the Beholder, Baldur's Gate game. Now you're playing your, your you know, Zelda. I, I'm totally drawing a blank on the name of the latest Zelda game, the popular one, or whatever, Grand Theft Auto, though that's totally not D&D or Fantasy. Wild. Breath of the Wild. Yeah, thank you. It's sandbox style, right? It's 
you're going to go to different places and have different experiences. And both the game master is presented with more options and the players have more freedom. This is going to play more like a homebrew campaign, a, a, a the DM improvising, making stuff off the top of their head with guidelines. So one of the things I ran into researching the, the adventure from this module or from this from this set was they don't actually follow sort of their own best practices for first level characters. So first level characters in D&D are squishy. Mm -hmm. They get mashed really easily. Um, now, I, it, I've never played 5e, so... It's, it's not quite as bad as it used <laughs> to be, but they're more squishy than fourth. Right, because I, I mean, I want... I, I see. I remember that a D twelve was the most hit points any character could ever get in in uh, in things. Whereas they actually there is actually in level one in chapter one of this adventure, there is a CR three Manticore that can do twenty one points of damage. Now, from what I understand, this is in result of people wanting more of that old school feel, where every fight shouldn't be that your characters can it, just there to be beat. Right. This is to this uh, to me. That's part of sandbox play. That's that's part of your hex crawl. That's part of your adventure. Is sometimes you go places you probably shouldn't have went, and I think that's what they were trying to get across. And yes, some groups did not like that. And and, and see, I I get that in a general sense, but first level in D and D yeah. is an exception. Uh, first level again, your characters are squishy. Your characters <laughs> are going to die really easily, so the, they should have the. Uh, ability to enjoy leveling up before they have the complete yeah. risk of being massacred um and, and this it feels a little on the tougher side uh based on the reading i was doing for this particular adventure now interestingly you're talking about leveling up in this one instead of level one to five you can go one to six i have no idea what the difference is between five and six in the current edition of D, &D but that's one more level right so you would think more you can get out of this now this is a quote from the Wizard of the Coast website, because everything up to this point, to me, sounds like an alternate starting spot. Whereas they called this, this is this is on the box. Take your first step into the world of Dungeons and Dragons or get a more expansive D&D experience after playing the starter set. So they're setting it up as a play after the starter set or your first step. So even there, like their their messaging is confusing. Again, they, I get a very basic D and D a D and D vibe going on here. Yeah, no, absolutely. And so for me, this is a really sort of, this is your next step after starter for most people, unless you have a experienced DM. If you right. have an experienced DM, I think essentials might be the better starter place. Uh, so starter, the starter uh, set, the starter box set, if everyone's new, if only the players are new, uh, and your DM has a little bit of experience, the essentials mm -hmm. may be your easier start. That being said, I think Mo and I both agree that there's nothing wrong with having all the stuff from both these sets. I agree. And it's a good price to be able to have everything mm -hmm. you get in both. Yeah. So a couple other notes about it is this is also in the Forgotten Realms. Um, and to be honest, the two adventures are, I don't know how exactly, but they're tied together. Like there, there is a, you can tell they're in the same world. Um, there are many people that consider this the ideal second purchase for new players who have bought the starter set. Because again, you're going to be able to create characters yep. and you're going to go from level one to six. And the dungeon master role is more fleshed out being a true DM instead of just reading box text, right. right? You're not you're not just driving the railroad down the track. You're actually able to come up with decisions that impact the play and your character, the characters yeah. playing with you. So that was, unless you have more to add, the D&D nope. &D Essentials Kit. Right. Now, next up is where we start to get into some of the naming problems. Yes. So our next up is the 2019 Stranger Things D&D &D Starter Set. This has an MSRP of $24.99. The Stranger Things Dungeons & Dragons Starter Set contains everything players need to embark on a Stranger Things adventure, including the essential rules of the role-playing game. It is a great new way, a great way for new as well as seasoned Dungeons & Dragons players to experience the D&D adventure Stranger Things character Mike Wheeler 
has created for his friends. And that's a quote from uh, yeah, that's, from that's the back of the box, basically. Yeah. So this one has your adventure book. It has a rule book. It's got five character pre-generated characters with their own character sheets, six dice, two Demogorgon figures, one pre-painted and one unpainted and primed ready to paint. Which I there's a scene in Stranger Things where Mike's painting, right? Is that why so they threw? Apparently, these are actually squishy ish plastic. Oh, they're, they're and they're like horrible to paint. Um, so it's 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 I'm really sure kind it's of their standard pre paint plastic, which is, is uh, honestly and uh, also to note the the stri- the character sheets, the pre gen characters are the characters played by the yes. kids in the TV show. Mm-hmm. So that's just. And I will say the look of this is fantastic. It looks like Mike's notebook, right? And and, and the character sheets are scribbled on. And it, the, there's a lot of physicality and artifacts in this that I think is really cool. If you told me that this wasn't 5e, that this was a AD&D, you know, oh. Redbox uh, or, or Redbox yep. edition, I would have believed you because that's yes. what they've done. They've given it. The red box treatment. Specifically the red box treatment. Yes, That's they made absolutely. it look like the red box. Yep. So this is a D&D starter set. Like it's, they say it right there. It's a great way for new D&D players. And it gives you all the rules. You literally have the D&D basic rules, pre-gen, start at level one, blah, blah, blah. Except you don't. Um, this isn't just a Stranger Things adventure. You don't need anything else but this box, and it's meant to be a gateway to D&D or people who bought into Stranger Things on Netflix. The adventure is the adventure that Mike wrote for, you know, Mike, quote unquote, Mike wrote for his yep. players. Uh, so, again, I, I'm not clear that this is in any way related to uh, the D&D for, uh, Forgotten Realms. I don't know on that one. Sorry, uh, that's not. I wasn't. I, was able, I wasn't able to find that out myself. Yeah. Uh, I, but... w- I would. It could be based on on on. Well, the demon gorgon is a demon that's in. in I think it was Greyhawk. So yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I honestly, <laughs> don't know on that one. I, I think it's probably in Mike's own world. Is my guess. I bet you it's Mike's cities. I and suspect so, so. Yeah. I, again, there's um, not a lot to it. <laughs> no. I, so you get pre gens, pretty expected, right? No character generation whatsoever. Um, the adventure, though, surprisingly, is written for an experienced DM. It is an improv heavy, here's some guidelines, run with it style of adventure, which to me does not belong in anything called starter set. What also goes with this is that the pregens are level three. Level three in D&D is like our level four in Charterstone, our fourth game. Like level three is when you start getting the fireballs. Right. And suddenly you have all these new options. And in a way, it's cool because honestly, it's level three in D&D can be way more fun than level one in D&D. So I get that. But it's so odd for something called the starter set. Yeah. And, and again, to me, I think this product is actually really fantastic. If they had ex- excluded the words... Starter set. Uh, I think this product just put is adventure. fantastic. It, yeah. The problem is it's it's the they needed to get across the fact that it's all you need to play. Right. That you don't need the player's handbook. You don't need the dungeon master guy. You don't even need to know anything about D and D five e, and you can play this. How do you do that without saying starter set? Yeah. I mean, I'm sure there I'm are sure terms, there were marketing experts. Yeah. And, there are terms you could use, but the problem is. Uh, they aren't terms that D and D uses for other products, and I'm sure right. they wanted to keep their branding consistent. Yeah. Um, so for me, this is not for starting out in D and D. It's for playing Stranger Things D and D, specifically playing the game that they are playing in the TV show yeah. as the characters from the TV show. The uh, weird part there, just an odd thing about this: why didn't they give you an original Demon Gorgon mini then? The Grenadier Sculpt. Because right. if you were going to play the D&D game, the D&D Gordon doesn't look like um, Audrey 2 <laughs> or what, whatever's going on there. Yeah. Now, complaints I have seen about this one. The adventure is very short. Um, barely enough to fill a long evening. Probably a little too short to split it in two, but you kind of don't want to put it all in one. Like two max 
I wore three because this is highly improv. If you're going to do lots of role playing, especially as a Stranger Thing characters, and you know, waste time playing Stranger Things, like I, you got a, you got a dream part going on here. You're going to be playing a character, playing a character. If you go into that whole thing, you could possibly stretch it out. Um, your characters do level up from level three to four, but there aren't all the rules for leveling up to level four. There's something very specific about a subclass that's completely skipped at level four, which D and D fans were upset about. And I'm kind of with Sean. Like, like to me, this is a one shot. This is this is something I go and I pick up and I run it on Halloween, or I play it with my friends who are into um, Stranger Things, or I run it at a con or at a, uh, a a local game store. Right, like like Free RPG Days this weekend. Like, go run this at Free RPG Day as an intro to D and D. Like, hey, you haven't played D and D? Come play this. Maybe then you might want to pick up the books from the shelf over there. But like, I can't see this as your intro to D and D, like yeah. it could be someone's intro yep. to D and D. I get, I think, and I think you nailed it right there. I think this would be a great con or demo game to bring in a new player with, where you've got a GM who really knows this adventure and knows Stranger Things really well and knows how to work a group to bring inexperienced players into the world and let yep. them have fun. Uh, because again, you do get way more sort of meet to a character as a level three character mm -hmm. than you do starting off as level one. But it's not something I would want to play with a fixed group that I was going to be going doing anything long term with necessarily, yeah. unless I we all said, hey, you guys want to do a Halloween adventure or, a con or you know, do, do a one shot. We're going to pick this up and do it. But even then, uh, as a one shot uh, at 25 bucks or no, 25, this one's only no, yeah, 25, 25 bucks. Yeah, 25, 25 bucks. 25 US. For what you get in this, especially considering the minis are of question, questionable quality, I, it's a hard buy. It, you know, some, I could see someone, you getting this for someone who's a Stranger Things fan, getting it for a Christmas gift, mm -hmm. and then maybe you do the one shot. But I, I have, would have a hard time imagining going out and buying this myself. And there's some, like I said, befuddling stuff. Like, uh, for one, you get two Demon Gordon miniatures that don't look like Demon Gordon from the series. But no minis for the characters or anyone else. Like, like, why do I get just the boss monster? I, 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 I find this product confusing. Uh, we do have a question from the chat asking about Elmore art. Um, I don't think Elmore did this cover, but it's a very Stranger Things cover. Um, it doesn't quite have the old school look. It's, it's like the cover's got the old. School, but I don't know. It's, it looks too modern to me. But I think it looks like Stranger Things. Right. I think they did. I, I don't know. This, this is a to me a fascinating project product and i think it's really neat that it exists and i have to admit like if we got the right group of players together i would love to run this and play it oh, yeah. but i can't recommend this one uh, like this is the, again it's the thing to trick stranger things fans it, it's a way to show them how simple D, D is everyone thinks D, D is a ton of math and complicated here's a way to trick your friends who like stranger things to be like look this is actually fun and it's not all just spreadsheets this is not if someone's like, hey, I want to learn about D&D. &D. No, this is for people who are like, oh, they, they, there's this game they play in there. That looks like fun. I'm like, hey, I got this box. You want to try it out? We can play the game they were playing. Yeah, it's it's weird. I, it really does sort of seem like a, a you know dangly piece of bait swinging in front of Stranger Things fans who don't know any role players. Yeah. <laughs> I, that's kind of how it feels to me and and that it you know feels a little dirty in that way again the naming of this kit is what completely throws me off i still don't know what else you'd name it though I, that's that's the part i'm stuck on is i'm like i don't know what else you call it a stranger thing adventure to me implies you need to have the the rest of the rules i mean i don't I, know stranger no, I things adventure put D &D kit. on the box just put stranger mm. things role-playing or the stranger something. things adventure kit brought to you by D, D. adventure kit yeah uh you know Anyway, yep. enough about enough about the upside down. All right, moving on. So our next product is again from 2019. This is Dungeons and Dragons versus Rick and Morty, a tabletop role playing game adventure. Now, despite being called adventure, this is an intro box again that includes all the rules you need to play and could work as an introduction to D and D. This has everything you need to play in one box again. You don't have to go out and buy anything else. So from the box, D&D &D has partnered with Adult Swim to bring this boxed set blending the world of Dungeons and Dragons with the mad narcissistic, narcissistic, 
genius of Rick Sanchez's Our Gaming Sensibilities. And it includes everything a dungeon master needs to channel, channel their inner mad scientist and run a Rick rolling adventure for up to five players, levels one to three. So this one's actually, oddly enough, has the thickest rule book, 64 page rule book. Um, it has an adventure called The Lost Dungeon of Rickedness, Big Rick Energy. It's a 44 page adventure, which is shorter than Fandelver, and I think the same as the essential kit. You get a DM screen, which just to me seems kind of random in this, but I got to say if that DM screen has all the stuff you'd want on a full DM screen for D&D, that might be enough just because it's a cool Rick and Morty themed DM screen. Uh, you get five pre-gens and 11 dice. So this one, again, the pre-gens are all uh, sort of characters related to the TV show or, in fact, the comic book, because this yeah. is actually based off of an IDG comic book series, two, two comic book series of D&D versus Rick and Morty. Mm -hmm. Now, this adventure, again, is going to get you level one to three. It's very short. Uh, again, no character generation whatsoever. Um, the adventure goes back to D&D's roots, which I think is interesting because the other ones didn't. Uh, this is a classic dungeon crawl. Lots of text boxes, read out loud text. Now, it really pushes for the DM to do the Inception thing and role play. You are meant to be Rick. You are meant to use your annoyed, condescending voice and power game the hell out of this. The, the rule book is actually filled not only with the core rules of the game, but also with Rick's comments mm -hmm. on the core rules of the game. So even just reading through the rules is a meta adventure in itself. Yes. And I have been told that it has some really good DM advice in there mixed in with the bad. And you got to be careful to know which is which. Now, looking at this, um, the dungeon is very scripted. Uh, there are very few options, and one of the things that I, I didn't, I couldn't find out a lot of the, about this in the Stranger Thing one, but the way Fandelver's written and the way the Essential Kid Adventures is you could replay them, and they could be completely different experiences. While you're going to encounter the same things, how you approach them is going to change. Stranger Things, I, I unfortunately couldn't find a lot of information on, but this one, I have been told, has like no replayability, that once you've gone through it, you've done the thing, you've had the journey, there's no reason to do it again. Yeah, there's going to be a lot of inside jokes that will just get old fast once if you yes. try to replay. Now, the adventure is just long enough that you probably want two sessions, but again, you could do it all in one long game. Again, this is really rubbing me as a one-shot. Like, it sounds like a fantastic Rick and Morty product. Like, like an awesome Rick and Morty product. Like, like reviews say it's also a solid intro to D&D, &D, though. And... I have read accounts of people getting into D and D from this. So again, you've got the the bait, right? That's a, this feels a lot like the Stranger Things set, which they were both put out the same year, and I'm sure they both that that's exactly what they were meant to be. Is is this bait for fans of various pop culture references? Yeah. Now this is specifically not called a starter box, but nope. it does contain essentially all the, all the starter content you need, except for character creation. So in some ways, this is the, the just before essentials box. Mm -hmm. Now, one of the things that I found about this is that the game involves a lot of sort of messing with everybody else. So the GM is the GM is in, is encouraged to mess with the players. And yeah. The players are encouraged to mess with each other. So if that sort of inter-party conflict mm -hmm. is not your cup of tea, step back, be aware that that is what is encouraged in this yeah. game. And to me, that's not a good game of D&D. &D. So I, as much as I am a Rick and Morty fan. Yeah. <laughs> to me, that's like a bad representation of what Dungeons and Dragons has become in yeah. a way, which is, is, is questionable. But I guess you're supposed to know that from Rick and Morty. I mean, Rick and Morty is about messing with each other, right? It's, it's yeah. a very dysfunctional family, and, and that's sort of the root of it. So in some ways, you, you should and, and would expect that. But as a D&D &D player, that's not... To me, as a D&D &D player, that's not good playing. I won't say that the, everyone should play that way. Everyone can play however they would like. But uh, you're supposed to be a group playing together to achieve things not you know it's undercutting not each other every competition. step exactly 
I don't know. Again, this sounds great for Rick and Morty fans. Uh, and again, maybe this is a good way to see if you and your friends dig Dungeons and Dragons. But like, I think if it does, you're just going to go pick up one of the other box sets on this list. Yeah. Like, in, unless you're a diehard Rick and Morty fan, I don't see any reason to pick this one up. I think if you are a diehard Rick and Morty fan, even if you don't want to play D&D, this is probably actually a fun piece of th something to read through. And there it may go. tickle your role playing, uh, you know, urges. And maybe maybe you do move on to role playing from it. But uh, more than anything, it's just, you know, another fun piece of Rick and Morty merchandise to pick up along the way. So that's it for the currently existing D&D starter sets that are out there now. Now, there's one more coming, and that is going to be a U.S. Target store exclusive. It's going to hit shelves on July 31st. It is going to retail $19.99 U.S. Note, you won't be able to get it anywhere else until October. Now, this one is going to be called Dragons of Stormwreck Isle. Now, the box, what we know of the box for this so yeah, far. The, the blurb in the, <laughs> the, the blurb we got sheets. is get ready for a brand new starter set experience. The Dungeons and Dragons starter set Dragons of Stormwreck. Uh, Stormwreck Isle contains the essential rules of the game, plus everything you need to play heroic characters caught up in an ancient war among dragons as they explore the secrets of Stormwreck Isle. All right, we're looking at a 48-page adventure booklet with everything you need to get started, a 32-page rule book only going from level one to three. So for the official Watsy non-weird branded, this is the lowest range of characters. You are getting five ready-to-play characters. No, ready-to-play means pre-generated, so no character generation. And, of course, a character sheet, and oddly the least number of dice out of all the sets with only six. Which I guess part of it's that I'm assuming you probably roll 4d6 to generate stats. I don't know. I, I, I assume at this point d and probably all point by in arrays. But it's just odd that, like, some of the sets you get 11 dice, some you get six. That's a significant difference. So they're calling this an ideal introduction to the world of Dungeons & Dragons, offering players and Dungeon Masters a turnkey onboarding experience. So right there, this is going to be where they send you now. I'm assuming, or maybe it's just where they send mass market people and only this will only be available in uh, mass market stores because they do say other stores in October, but doesn't like, like they may be just going for the mainstream market and not the hobby market or the comic book market. I don't know, but it sure sounds like this is going to be the gateway. But for all you know, they'll keep the other one going. <laughs> Yeah, so this one is is interesting. No character creation is yep. is indicated in any way that we can find. So, yeah, supposedly much shorter adventure book. Like if you compare the page counts, much shorter than Fan so Um, this I I you weren't able to find it, but I did find someone actually went through and found the graphic of the index of the book in small okay. and blew it up and and did some work. This is in the Forgotten Realms. Okay. Which we weren't I sure about. Stormwreck Isles and I couldn't find <laughs> anything. Yeah. So uh, according to the, the index of the uh, the GM guide, this is part of Forgotten Realms. Uh, it is so still, in a way, that's good. Yeah. I have no complaint with that. Uh, it is still a four chapter adventure, which is the same chapter length as okay. the current starter box. Um, and uh, WizKids is putting out a miniature line to support oh, both course. the figure, both the characters, and a number of monsters. So we do actually have, if you if you check out the the WizKids miniatures, you do get an idea of some of the monsters that you'll be facing in yeah. the uh, in the included adventures. Now, what I am seeing is no DM screen and no maps. So I'm a little confused that we're going to get a bunch of miniatures, but there's no combat map. Like there's no gridded map. That's a little strange. Usually if you're going to do the minis, you get the maps to go with them. Of course, you could probably buy a map from WizKids sold separately or something like that. Um, I am glad it's in, in the realms like Stormwreck Isles. I, I'm wondering if they finally created someone new for the realms to <laughs> keep it apart from everything else that's going on. I don't know. Like, like looking at this, it kind of looks like a step backwards especially from the essentials kit, but like it, it seems to be a step backwards from even the original starter set. And it's not like it has a super lower price. Like if this was now a $15 entry. That would also make more sense. So interestingly, what I've seen from a couple of sort of follow-up 
uh, posts and, and content uh, reviews are it looks like they've dumbed it down in paper. So they're actually pushing less paper out the door. But okay. using QR codes, they've actually got videos and web pages and online content uh, to help back you up and help support the mm. written content. And to be fair, in the modern, you know, these kids kids are kids today are living on their on their devices. Yeah. They that probably works better for them than it does for you and I. <laughs> well, see, as I've already figured out that they just don't seem to get rid of any old content online that doesn't sound bad. But if you're like me and you have a starter set from 2014 sitting back there and it is now how many I don't even know how many years 2014 to now. That's that's more math than I can do in my head right now. But <laughs> what, are those QR codes still going to work? Like that? That's what I worry about, right? Well, like, the, the reason I think it might be is apparently this is actually designed to transition from the starter set into what they're calling the D and D curriculum in schools. So I, it, it looks like their new, their, their current uh, long-term plan starts with this box and continues through the schooling system that they are trying to push into the educational system and after school programs. Yeah. Uh, the other thing I don't see mentioned at all about this new set is D&D &D Beyond. Now, I will admit right now, I should have said this at the top of the episode, we are not going to get into D&D &D Beyond. That is a valid option as a way to learn D&D &D, and a gateway to D&D &D is to join D&D &D Beyond and play with people online. That is a thing many people do. We specifically wanted to talk about starter sets since that's what Kevin asked. I haven't seen anything about this new set in D&D &D Beyond because I have been told that one of the things D&D Beyond offers is additional content for these existing starter sets. They, they, like once you finish Fandelver, you can then go online to D&D Beyond and get more stuff. Well, and Fandelver at least was for a time during the pandemic offered free. completely for free yeah. uh, to all D&D Beyond members. Um, yeah, and I, the D&D Beyond thing is, is I, I almost started looking at it and then I stopped like, because there's no, too it's, many... It's, different levels of subscription and add-on content. Um, it seems to me that more than likely they are, especially considering the fact that, let's be honest, Wizards just purchased D&D &D Beyond, uh, yes. that they are going to be incorporating all D&D &D content and D&D &D moving forward. They, they want yeah. players to become used to D&D &D Beyond as part of the D&D &D experience. Mm -hmm. uh, and to be honest, from what I don't, I know of D and D Beyond from watching other people, that may not be a bad thing. It's you know characters anywhere. It's your, it's basically your Google Drive for all your things D and D. What would be really nice though is that if you bought the dang book in the real world, you got the D and D Beyond copy. It didn't have to buy a separate digital copy. That's when I might actually try out the D and D Beyond. Maybe I'm just being old and grumpy, but that's where. Well, and again, I draw there's the line. there's some weirdness D &D because Beyond. there's. There's two different subscription levels, and they do offer some things depending on your subscription level. But because uh, your your basic subscription level for unlimited characters and and other content is only two ninety nine a month, still. Which I, again, I don't compared think that to gives most, you access to your books. That's the problem. Yeah, see, I don't know, and again, I don't, I don't know all the things. But yeah. a lot of times, they they only expect the DM to be the one buying the books. Um, so that's the same now. Yep. I, I don't know, fine too. But anyway, we're not here to talk about D&D, but that's a totally different topic. If you want us to talk about that, we can do the research. So at this point, we talked about physical bo box sets you can buy. There is another valid way to get into D&D that's still physical, not joining D&D beyond no subscription or anything like that. Is and, and a lot of people don't realize this, but the basic rules, the core rules for 5th edition Dungeons and Dragons are 100% free. They are available on Wizards of the Coast website. The uh, you could go right now and grab it. They're not very long. I think it's about eight pages of rules. And then the rest is all like spells and magic items and stuff, reference material. And this is how I learned fifth edition d and I have a printed out copy of the basic rules in a binder. And when I ran d and encounters when fifth ed started, that's what I used. That's what I had. I didn't, the player's handbook didn't exist yet. And then when it did, I just kept using these because it was the same thing. Um, since the inception of D&D, &D, and they, they're promising they will always be free. You just go there and you download them. And so the basic rules run from uh, levels 1 to 20 and cover the cleric, 
fighter, rogue, and wizard, presenting what we view as the essential subclass for each. It also provides the dwarf, elf, halfling, and human as racial options. In addition, the rules contain 120 spells, five backgrounds, and character sheets. Now, what you're not going to get is all the other, the bells and whistles, all the nice stuff that you're going to get, right? All the stuff that, that comes in the intro box, the, the additional tools, right? You're not going to get a DM screen. You're going to have to provide your own dice. You probably have a friend that have them. There'll be a local game store. No pre-generated characters. And to me, most importantly, no introductory adventure. Anyone who's new to role-playing, I, I, this is a, a pet peeve of mine. I personally think every role-playing game core book and every beginner box should come with an adventure to show the Gungeon Master, DM, whatever you want to call it, um, how the game is meant to be run. Like, to me, that is an, a, a core part of the system is to be like, okay, here's everything I've given you. Here's what I expect you to do with it. That's It's a love letter to the DM of here's what this game's designed to do. Without that, all you got is a bunch of numbers. And trust me, there was a point in time in my life when the only AD&D second edition product I owned was the player's handbook. And we didn't know what the heck we were doing and just fought each other's characters all the time because the rules didn't really explain there was more than that because we didn't have the Dungeon Master's Guide. So this is a set of mechanics. This is rules. This is game mechanics. The rest is up to you and your group to do on your own. Now, note there is a DM section. So it does kind of talk about how to run the game. And you do get monster spells and items. So literally everything you need to run, you could run an entire campaign of D&D from level 1 to 20 from those rules, from those free core rules. But there's no help. No hand-holding. Just a big pile of stuff without a lot of guidance with what to do with it. Now, if you can find an experienced DM from any system, really, not just D&D, this may actually be the best way to go. Yeah. Now, well, I personally think these are definitely better suited for someone who knows role-playing games. I think it's also... Um, good for people who are curious about D&D, but even more so where I think these really shine is for the OD&D, AD&D, AD&D 2nd Edition, 3.5, Pathfinder, people who are like, okay, what's the big deal with 5th Ed? Why, why is everyone falling in love with 5th Ed? Let's find out what happened to the game I grew up playing. That's where I think these are perfect. This, is, this is where to, I should be going. Really? Yeah, <laughs> if, if, if you are looking to get back into D&D, and already know what D and D is, because to be honest, the the kind of basic flow of the game and basic mechanics of roll a twenty sided die, compare it to a number, and ask the DM what happens, hasn't really changed. And the lore is all still very similar. You're still doing the usual things you did at first level now that you did back in the seventies. So if you have a familiar with D and D, this may be the best place to start. Yeah, absolutely. Again, you know, I I. I played 2E, I played 2.5, uh, but then I kind of walked away from D&D and went elsewhere. So this is what will get me where I need to, uh, where I need to go. So there you have it. six different entry points for Dungeons and Dragons. Official, official entry points. There are, of course, more. Uh, which one is best is going to be up to your group. Though I think most groups are going to be picking between the starter set, the currently existing starter set, and the essentials kit. Though I, I am not seeing any reason at this point to wait for the Target exclusive set coming out in a month. Well, the Stranger Things and Rick and Morty sets look cool, and they may be awesome for getting fans of those series into D&D they don't seem like a great spot for someone who's already interested in D&D. If you're like, I want to start playing D&D, where do I start? I would avoid those. So again, if your group loves Rick and Morty or Stranger Things, they could be a valid starting place because both products are complete standalone products that do teach you the mechanics of Dungeons & Dragons. And while always, if you don't want to spend any money, you can play D&D for free. You can find an online dice roller, borrow a phone, I, I, you may, use scraps of paper. Uh, this hobby does not need to be expensive. You can get none of the bells and whistles for 100% free. Yeah. And now for me, while, they're, while the rules are absolutely in the Rick and Morty and Stranger Things boxes, I wouldn't encourage non-gamers to use them to get into D&D. &D. I feel like there's just so much baggage from 
the the product lines of Rick and Morty and Stranger Things, mm -hmm. the transitioning from that into I, I hate to use the term, but pure D and D is going to be a rough ride. Yeah, and plus there's the again there's the lore right there's, there's years of lore built into Dungeons Dragons. We talked about how all of the starter sets, uh, except for the rethemed ones, are set in a, a world called the Forgotten Realms. The tone, especially of Rick and Morty, which has player versus player interaction and combat, is going to be very different than the tone of a traditional Dungeons and Dragons game with its three pillars of you know leveling up, exploration, combat. It's going to be totally different. Now, as for my recommendation, start with the starter set. Um, it's cheap. Uh, like uh, the MSRP is down to seventeen, whatever. But you can find it cheaper than that. Uh, even in Canada, I've seen it pretty low. I have seen it in the U.S. drop as low as eight dollars on on you know Black Friday, Prime Day stuff like that. Now, that is unless your group really is pushing to play their own character. Like if I, I again, I haven't talked to Tech's daughter about this or Kevin's daughter, but if Kevin's daughter is like me and my friends want to play D&D, &D, we spent the last week sketching our characters and we really want to have an adventure together. Like my daughter does this kind of stuff. Like my daughter will make an OC and come up with their colors and all this stuff before we sat down to play something. And then if I sit down and go, OK, you've got to play the burly dwarf or you've got to play whatever. And she'd be like, but I want to play my character. Right? If, if that's your group then jump right to the essentials kit because you get to play your own character. Now, the adventure in the starter set, by all accounts, is better and longer. You basically get a full campaign and you get to experience five levels of play. And it's more new DM friendly than the essentials kit and the other two sets that we're going to not bother mentioning again. Right. And now, again, there is some and there's some confusion there's there's some <laughs> there's some confusing confusing uh online aspects of this. I believe that when you buy the starter set, you are getting some D D Beyond content unlocked. And they and there is a Not free mine. and there is a free level of D D Beyond usage. There is a free tier. So that always online uh, digital aspect, digital management is becoming a growing important thing for currently online generations. So uh, it's certainly something to think about and consider keeping the back of your mind as you're moving forward with D&D. &D. Now, if you played D&D &D before any edition, literally any edition, I think you should just start with the essentials kit. I think that's going to really shine. Your players are going to appreciate being able to make your own characters and will probably better enjoy the sandbox style adventure. Yeah. The other key feature of essentials is that one on one rule set. Mm -hmm. So if it's just you and a friend or a sibling, this may push you from the starter to essentials just in order to deal with that smaller player count without, as Mo mentioned, having to, you know, handle multiple characters yeah. at one time. Now, honestly, though, I None of this is expensive, especially if you compare it to other role-playing game box sets. Hasbro, Wizards of the Coast has priced these as a lost leader. They are not making a ton of money on these. They are doing this so you will get into their game and then go spend more money on all the other stuff. What I actually would do myself if I was just about to get in is pick up both. I would go get the starter set and the essentials kit. I'm going to get additional dice. I'm going to get reference cards. Those cards could be so useful. I hate looking up stuff in books. Just having all those cards from the essentials kit. You're going to get a DM screen, which uh, pro tip, put it to the side. Don't sit behind it. Don't put a wall between you. You can still hide your stuff. Put it off to the side. And then I would probably play through Fandelver. Um, I'm an experienced role player DM, so I wouldn't have a problem with this. I would probably also give my players the option to make their own characters. So I would kind of match the two into my own hybrid D&D &D starter set. Now, of course, this will depend on how much disposable income you've got. But if you can afford it and do feel like you really are interested in the world of D&D, &D, this gives you the most to work with. Now, however, it is also potentially a lot more reading and a chance sure. to get overwhelmed before you even start. So that just, you know, your levels of, right. of ability to focus, stay focused of the people involved may come into uh, play. 
Yeah, what I would recommend is if you do buy both, just start with one. Like, like read through the starter set and then decide. All right, we, let's, let's play this. You know what? That's enough. That's enough for me right now. Let's try this out and see if I'm I'm willing to learn more. Uh, or just dive all in and read everything. Now, before we go, um, <laughs> this is this is the Jeff Seuss clause. I feel the need to point out there are other role playing games out there other than Dungeons and Dragons, despite what you see in popular culture. And some of them have truly amazing starter sets. Now, I love RPG beginner boxes. Any longtime fan knows this by now. I love to read them. I like to run them. I like to see how every company and designer and writer does things differently. I like to see the differences in what they choose to put in the box. I have reviewed a number of these over at tabletopbellhop.com, and I do invite you to check them out when you have time. Now, some of my favorite RPG beginner boxes include the amazing The One Ring starter set. This has you playing hobbits going on a bit of an adventure around the Shire. There's the Tales from the Loop starter set, which has you solving mysteries as kids in an 80s that never was. One of the all-time best beginner boxes I've ever played is the Pathfinder beginner box, which I actually think is the best F20, so D20 fantasy starter set I've ever seen. And then for something completely different, moving away from the fantasy aspects and the, the mysticism and sci-fi, is the Sentinel comic starter set, which to this day is honestly one of the best superhero RPGs I've ever played. And it includes more scenarios and adventures than I've ever seen in one starter set. Now, another one, if you want to stay on the supers train, and I generally do, uh -huh, Spectaculars is another super box set that is a little pricey compared to what uh, a generic starter box but this gives you a great setting and a full narrative system to play in now another thing i do want to mention uh, just because we haven't brought it up and honestly one of the best ways to learn any role-playing game is to find someone who already knows how to play uh, someone in our chat has mentioned this that local libraries are now a big source of getting people into role-playing games which is amazing um, I think, unfortunately, I don't know of one local. Local game stores tend to run game nights. You can play online. We talked about D&D Beyond. One of the best ways to learn Dungeons & Dragons is to find someone who already knows it and have them teach you. Now, this may not be your, your, your choice. Like, personally, I like reading rules and teaching games. I learned to play Dungeons & Dragons from reading a book. I learned my first role-playing game from reading a, a box set. There was no internet, no way to go look this stuff up, and I didn't even know if anyone down the street might be playing it. Some people prefer that, but if that's not you, finding an established group or gaming area is a great way to do it. Now, nowadays, most local game stores are going to have some form of Dungeons & Dragons support, whether it's Adventure League in the store or they're going to know who to send you to. Absolutely. So that's it for our look at various Dungeons & Dragons beginner boxes out there. Now remember, we're here to answer your gaming and game night questions every week. If you got a question for us, head over to the website, click on Ask the Bellhop, or fire off an email to questions at tabletopbellhop.com.